I'd like to call tonight someone's a planning board meeting to order. Anna, please call the roll. Paul Ribaitis. Here. Ron LaHoulier. Here. Jason Berry. Here. Jeremy Rhodes. Here. Chris Horton. Here. David Witham. Here. Robert Belmore. Here. Mark Richardson. Here. Doug Haberman. Here. This time I'd like to appoint Mr. Haberman as full voting member this evening. First item is approval of minutes of the meeting of August 16, 2023. Mr. Chair, move to accept. Motion made by Mr. Robita, seconded by Mr. Berry. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose or abstain? I'll abstain. Next item, committee reports. You have the land use board report summary in front of you. Does anybody have any comments? Next city council report, Mr. Witham. Thank you, I'll be brief this evening. Uh, on Monday night, the council uh, adopted uh, Sunningdale Drive and the Firefly Circle, Luna Circle, and one more up in that uh, development. Um, uh, we accepted the street, so that is now an official city street. Uh, it was built to city specifications, so in, uh, uh, some repair work was done to an identified concern. They took care of that, so uh, a number of residents were here. They were appreciative of the action that we took there. A couple of project updates. Uh, if you've driven the High Street Corridor over the last week or so, you've seen that the uh, CMAC uh, project is underway. That's enhancement of all the signalized intersections from Blackwater Road to the Dover Line. Uh, they've started off with the pedestrian access points and things of that nature. They'll eventually get into replacing the cabinets, the signal heads, and then uh, having them all coordinated. Uh, if you've driven that corridor, you know it's frustrating. Most of the signals are on timers, they're not on sensors. Uh, so we'll have uh, sensors reinstalled, cameras. Uh, the traffic preemption will be improved and th the flow should be better. I mean, that is the intent of this project. Uh, it's a big project, it's a million dollar project, but uh, hopefully it yields uh, some benefit. The other big project was the TAP grant, which was the new sidewalk on High Street, right. which came out really well. Um, Improvements to the intersection at Memorial Drive and High Street, better lit. It's got the rectangular rapid flash beacons, things of that nature. Um, and uh, we are there's a couple of punch list items, most notably the uh, walkway lights down by the high school and middle school, which are back ordered. So uh, we're waiting on those. Other than that, uh, we're all set there. Thank you. Thank you. Strap Regional Planning Commission update. Mr. Richardson. Sure. Um, couple of things uh, at our last meeting um, he's done one of the things we talked about and Chris feel free to jump in if I leave anything out um, we have monthly meetings we have quarterly meetings and we have an annual meeting and we spent a considerable amount of time trying to talk about how to consolidate some of those and the meetings have different purposes and we might hear about it tomorrow because tomorrow is our quarterly meeting uh, what what effort that has been done but it's made it diff even though we have a combination of uh, people being at the meetings in, in person and others doing it online uh, and attendance has been fine that way uh, there are still some that aren't able to meet as as often as we meet so trying to get more uh, participation from the commissioners in the various towns and uh, have fewer meetings hopefully that'll that'll work out. Um, last, uh, on the second point, last Thursday, we had our, um, our housing forum, which um, started with the survey on, on housing needs here in Summersworth that uh, the SRPC in conjunction with city staff put out. Uh, the, um, I was surprised. First of all, it was very well attended, I thought. Um, and, and a variety of people were at that. Um, the um, the survey kind of pointed towards more needs for family housing, which I've been preaching for quite a while. In person, in the room, there were th three breakout rooms and we only were able to attend one. And in, and in the room that, that I was in, the focus turned towards um, auxiliary dwelling units. <laughs> I always have a hard time remembering that name. Uh, ADUs and to tiny houses and making it 
uh, having them be more accessible to people here in Summersworth too. So that was kind of an interesting change from what the survey pointed out to people in person. Uh, so something that you know we're going to have to think about and see where it goes. So, Chris, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Just to follow up on that, you know, uh, there was a lot of uh, data included in their presentation that talked about our zoning regulations, uh, our housing needs for the uh, coming future. So I think the estimate was 750 additional new houses by 2030 just to meet up with the growth of the, uh, uh, the region and, and all, that, all that stuff. So a lot of good information. The second part, I, I believe, is the uh, zoning audit. So they're going to look at our current ordinance and um, make recommendations on how we can uh, modify and improve those ordinances to meet community needs and engagement. So. And, and, and one other thing, uh, while, while Chris was talking, I re was reminding myself that one of the things that it clearly showed is that our median income here is not keeping up with the rising prices of housing. Uh, making it difficult for people to afford to live here. So that's just something we're going to really need to address at some point in time. And it was nice having a developer in our room. Uh, we had one real estate agent in our room as well. Um, hearing their input was kind of fun. We need more of that. We need to have that di dialogue continue. Hi, thank you. Mr. Belmore, did you have a comment? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to, in case people hadn't picked up, uh, next Wednesday, the 27th, the city's having an open house at the fire station from 4 to 6. So uh, hopefully you get a chance. You might want to swing by, take, get a tour. It's uh, quite, a, uh, quite a new facility. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. 2030 Committee. Mr. Berry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the meeting was canceled for this month, so the next one will be in October. So um, should be on the 25th. Okay, thank you. Next item, item three, old business. Is there any old business to come before the board this evening, Director Mears? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Next item, item four, new business. Item 4A, Packing Investment LLC is seeking site plan and conditional use permit approval to construct 40,000 square foot mini warehouses, self storage units, and 10 solar trackers with infrastructure on a property located at 363 Route 108 in the Commercial Industrial CI District, Assessors Map 48, Lot 22B, Site Number 15, 2022, and CUP Number 14, 2022. Director Mears, anything to add? Yeah, so this applicant is proposing to construct 4,000 square feet of new self storage. Uh, units and 10 solar trackers with 48 panels. Uh, the site has an existing 19,000 square foot uh, self storage uh, facility. There's a number of buildings. The applicant was before the planning board in January of 2023 and the application was found to be incomplete uh, due to the following reasons. Uh, the third party review for drainage uh, was not completed. Since then, Horsley Winton has completed the second peer review of the project and has found that the applicant addressed all their comments. Uh, they provided a landscaping plan in this new submission. And the planning board asked that the Conservation Commission uh, make a recommendation for the CUP. The Conservation Commission reviewed at their August and September meetings and provided a recommendation for approval with conditions. With that, the application is ready for the board to take action. All right, thank you. Is there a motion to accept the application? So moved. Motion made by Mr. Robitus. Second. Second by Mr. Horton. Discussion. Mr. Witham. When this project was in front of us before, did we not accept the application as complete for review because we were warranting information, or is this a redundant vote? Correct. You, you, did, you did not accept the application. You did not. So the applicant resubmitted uh, and paid fees again. Got it. So this is like we're starting anew. Yes. Thank you. Any further discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. This time I'd like to invite Mr. Stoll to uh, make the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bob Stoll at TriTech Engineering. 
representing the applicant this evening. Um, as was mentioned, we did have a false start back in, in January here, and uh, we're lacking information. The, uh, the, the key points I think uh, um, Director Mears addressed was, was we did get the third party review from, from Horsley Witten. Uh, they did an initial review, had a few minor comments, and we, we addressed those to their satisfaction. Uh, we had uh, asked for a waiver to the landscaping plan, uh, but that idea wasn't, wasn't well received that evening when we were here, so we did prepare a landscape plan, sheet LA-1 that's in your package now. And, and um, we did go to the, back to the Conservation Commission, and we, we worked with, with uh, the Conservation Commission on coming up with a, a, a bet, better proposal than we had. Uh, when we were here initially, we had 12 solar trackers. We're down to 10 solar trackers now, and they, they were moved from the areas that were adjacent to the, to the wetlands and the wetland buffers. And that made it easier to uh, come up with a a proposal that was was uh, satisfactory to the conservation commission. We, we met with them a, a week ago, and did uh, receive a favorable recommendation with a with a couple couple of uh, proposed amend amendments to the to the uh, to the plan. And those those are included in uh, haven't been incorporated in the plans yet. That was just last Wednesday but they are uh, reflected in staff comments and, and uh, the applicant is agreeable to those, those additions to the, to the plan set. Uh, in addition to uh, the CUP request that we made, we, do, we are requesting three, three waivers. Uh, we are requesting a, a waiver to the bike rack requir requirement that, uh, again, the, that doesn't seem to be consistent with, with the self-storage use, um, that if there's any bikes there, there, they are in the storage units. So we, d we didn't feel that was, that was warranted, and we, we have requested a waiver to that requirement. We've also requested a waiver to the, to the sidewalk requirement along Route 108. Uh, that's an area that presently doesn't have s sidewalks and is not uh, s an area that's not included in uh, upgrades in, in the forthcoming uh, one weight plans. So we are respectfully requesting a, a, uh, a waiver to, to that requirement as well. We did talk a little bit when we were here in January about a, a, a waiver to the traffic analysis, and, a, and again, just due to the use, um, I, g I gave the example when, when we, were, we were here. The last traffic analysis we did for self-storage was for 30,000 square feet uh, of storage. This is only a 4,000 square foot addition, so it's just a fraction of that. But the average daily trip for 30,000 was, was 45 trips a day. Uh, which would mean this is going to generate approximately six trips a day and, and uh, felt the effort to go through a full traffic analysis uh, wasn't warranted due to that in very low requirement there. So those are the three waivers that we're asking for. Again, we did withdraw the waiver request for the landscaping and, and the landscaping plan is now included in the, in the package. Uh, the boards I have here, the, the high board is the, the site plan. That's just a colored version of your of your sheet SP1, and the lower plan is the, the, the conditional use application plan. Um, and I'd be happy to walk through any questions that the, the board may have. You all set for now? I'm all, I'm all set. Okay, open the public hearing. Is there anybody that cares to comment on this application? Director Mears, is there any correspondence concerning this application? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close the public hearing. Turn to questions from the board. Mr. Rhodes. Uh, a little bit of background first, then a couple of questions for the applicant's representative. Um, this plan has kind of been through the ringer with the Conservation Commission, um, to put it mildly. Uh, the original plan had a number of issues, including the placement of solar trackers actually in the wetland buffer. Um, <clears throat> that's been modified significantly from what you see here. The, the larger issue that we were facing with the more recent versions of this plan were that the applicant had gone in and cleared a fairly large section of timber on the property, thinking that it was a timber harvest, including some cutting inside of a wetland, um, which led us to the conversation around restoration of the site. Um, went through a couple of iterations of that, and where we came to rest is something that I don't believe is reflected on the plans as they were submitted here due to the timing, uh, but that we were quite amenable to. Uh, what the applicant had proposed to do was effectively restore the site as an open meadow as opposed to trying to replant 
more mature trees. Um, they come up with a customized seed mix working with a organization, I think it was in Massachusetts. Yes, New, New Hampshire Wetland Seed Mix, yes. Thank you. Um, it included a, a number of different varieties of plant that over the course of one or two reseedings would likely establish a meadow condition on the site um, as you got into the highlands that were a little drier in the areas that were right down into the wetland. Um, that also included no species that would grow over the height that would prevent the solar trackers from functioning well. So it's a good compromise point between um, what the site was and what the site could be with the conditions the applicant brought it to. Uh, the questions that I've got for Mr. Stoll, um, the plans that we had seen at conservation and uh, the seed mix that we'd seen there aren't reflected in this packet. And you'd mentioned that there were staff comments that addressed that. I saw two staff comments in here, one for the, the shift to sweet fern from a couple of blueberries that were in drier conditions that likely wouldn't have done well. Um, what I hadn't seen was the stipulation that we had put on around no cutting of the plantings apart from pioneer species that could interfere with the solar trackers. And I wanted to confirm that that was an amenable uh, condition to your client. Yes, I, I did notice that was absent as well, it, it, okay. but it is amenable to the client. Okay, sounds good. I'll look to add that yep. to conditions here. Yep. Um, and that the seed mix as presented to the Conservation Commission be used on site for this. Um, it was a very well thought out seed mix. I think it was somewhere on the order of 15 different species. So you've got a site here with a variety of conditions. There's a, a fairly significant drop off right into a wetland. So whatever you put down the first year, not everything's gonna take in every spot, but as you reseed it a couple of times, it will fill it in. So there's clearly been thought put into the restoration here. Um, we went through a couple iterations, but I think we got there. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Rose, Mr. Witham. Thank you. Questions and, and comments here. So I'm looking at the application and we voted to accept it as complete for review, I, perhaps in error. The, the application shows a date of October of 2022. I thought he we restarted this. It, it's it's the same app, application. He be paid a new fee, but it the 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 circumstances of the application hadn't changed. So it it is the the, the same application. So here's where I'm going with this. I'll cut right to the chase. We're currently in review of an ordinance regarding solar arrays here in the city of Summersworth. Um, been underway now for a few meetings. We might well vote on it here tonight. Um, and I forget the details of how this works, but we had a situation back some number of years ago now where there was active <coughs> legislation being considered around a particular uh, planning board site plan amendment uh, that we were looking at to our regulations. And it applied to applicants during that period. So my uh, point is, is that this project would need to comply with the ordinance that we're currently considering. So at some point here this evening, I'll be making a motion to the table because I'd like a legal opinion on that because I think it's a significant point. And what does that have to do with the application? We heard we, we've started over. We, we had a false start. So if it was in before we started this deliberation on our solar ordinance, maybe they're grandfathered. I don't think they are anymore with this so-called false start. So I think there's a fair amount of uh, work that needs to be done to examine that. And I think the date of the application is important. And I think our vote to uh, accept the application as complete for review was perhaps an error now that I look at the date here. Um, absent, uh, notwithstanding the, the legal opinion that I think we need on this project, this is a very, in my opinion, invasive project. Ten solar trackers is a lot. Uh, they're going to be very visible by neighbors and by the street, hence why we are crafting the solar ordinance for this very issue. Uh, and absent the fact that maybe our ordinance will not apply to this, this definitely screams 
out loud the need for a site walk. And at that site walk, I'd be one planning board member that would like to see these solar trackers represented in some way, maybe a balloon or some other uh, methodology to show how they will be, how high they'll be so that we can get an appreciation. Um, absent that, my initial knee-jerk reaction is that this is not good for the neighborhood. Uh, it might be very good for the applicant. I'm not sure it's what we intend for here in Summersworth. Uh, I'm certainly not in favor of the project currently. I think it needs to comply with our current zoning ordinance. So at some point tonight after we have more board discussion, I'll be making a motion to the table. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Barry. <clears throat> I completely agree with Councillor Witham. Honestly, it's you know I don't I don't have a problem with the, with the the design of the site. I think the location of the buildings is good. I think the 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 road that you're putting in the drainage, it's all good. But the only thing that gives me heartburn is the quantity of trackers. I mean, one is trackers. Two is the quantity of trackers. Um, I mean, this is clearly geared up to be more of a industrial size power production system that you guys are putting together here. It, you know. There's no way that your site is going to use this. So, I mean, how do we feel about having an industrial grade solar generation facility on this site? Uh, much, uh, and also to keep going on uh, Councillor Witham's train of thought, you know, I work right across the street, right? My office is Conatech, so I, I look at this site all day, every day. Um, they're going to be big. And there's going to be a lot of them. It, that's all we're going to see is, is solar. Um, you know, I'm worried about glare. I'm worried about, you know, just general sight lines from, from the street. Um, you know, maybe I could be on board for a handful of them in the back, but um, this, what is it, six or it So pretty much like six of them are in the existing development already. So it, it's given me heartburn, guys. I, I don't know how I feel about the quantity of trackers. Um, I'm open to hear what the others have to say, but certainly I agree with the site walk. I'd love to see some sort of representation of what these are going to look like. Uh, I, I think a balloon is a wonderful idea. Um, but I'm open to a suggestion. Thank you. Mr. Richardson. Yes, Mr. Chairman, well, maybe I, I missed something here, I'm, which wouldn't be the first time, but I'm confused. Uh, the photographs we received show the trackers on top of buildings yet the drawings show them on the ground. And I don't know what we're voting on here. I'm assuming we're voting on what's on the ground. What, I'm assuming we're voting on this, not this. Yeah, that, that, that's a representative uh, solar trackers in combination with, with, with storage units. Uh, in that particular project, some of them are uh, incorporated into the building. In this particular project, there's only one that, that is incorporated in the building, which is which is building two, uh, the of the new two storage buildings, not building number two, that 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 tracker is actually incorporated into the building itself. Yeah, I, I mean that that's kind of what I assumed that this was just a representation, but that was kind of a leap of faith. I mean, I I, I would rather have seen photographs showing them on the ground you know, an example of that than something that we're not looking at at all. So that's, that's, that's my issue on that. Other than that, I, you know, if, if we get to this, I don't have any problem with the waiver requests that you have. Uh, I, th I think this, the solution uh, of the meadow that you've been talking about with Mr. Rhodes is an, is an excellent uh, solution, something that's good. Uh, I too was kind of questioning in my mind the timing of this before we go ahead with our ordinance review, which I'm assuming after it goes here has to be accepted by city council. Is that correct, Councillor? Yes. Yeah, okay. So there's a bit of a time delay on that. So I wasn't sure if, if we voted on this tonight, where that fit into all of that. But other than that, you know, I'm curious as to what other people think too. I'm probably not ready to vote on it tonight. That's Mr. Horton. <clears throat> so I was, I've been kind of on the fence on this one too, but you know, you guys, the board brings up a lot of good points and uh, I'd certainly be open to a site walk to better understand the impact of a uh, project uh, this size and scale. So um, I think, uh, you know, a little more investigation and legwork and, and perhaps a site visit would be in order as well, so. I got. Mr. Rhodes. 
So taking a look at the solar ordinance that <clears throat> we have under consideration at this point, this is in a CI district. Um, so an array of this size would be permitted under a CUP for that. Um, I'm, I, I think I've been on record a number of times as being a proponent of solar installations, including large scale ones and relatively permissible regulations for them in the city. I would continue that here. I think that the size here could warrant a site walk, could warrant a look at it. However, this is not plopping 10 solar trackers into a residential neighborhood. This is CI's own land. So we should be considering that when we talk about where we allow solar and where we don't in the city. I think if you're going to have an installation like this, CI zoned land is the appropriate space for it. And provided there's not some argument, strong argument against their placement on this site, this would be a good candidate. That said, there's some cleanup with this application that could be in order. We've got some dates off. We've got some things we discussed at conservation that aren't included in this packet. Um, that should probably be in what we actually vote on. Um, I'm not opposed to a site walk to take a look at where the trackers would land on the site and make sure that there isn't some traffic concern with them. But this is where you want solar if we're going to have solar in the city. And if we don't want solar in the city, we shouldn't be looking at a solar ordinance like what we have. Any other comments from the board? Mr. Witham. Thank you. Um, I, I too support solar. Uh, I, I think part of my heartburn with this is less about this application and more about we have an ordinance in motion. And I'm not saying they're trying to circumvent that ordinance by what they're trying to do here, but we, we had a case a number of years ago, and I wish I had the specifics and had the time to dig it up, but I think it applies. And I just want to make sure that we're maybe not for this applicant, but for some issue down the road that we're very clear and we handle things in a consistent manner. So I think that legal opinion is important. You raised the other good question, the site walk. I, I talked about neighbors and all of that, but the fact that these are in the travel lanes, I, I wanna make sure there's room for like fire trucks to get underneath of them. I don't know how high they are. Uh, I, I need an appreciation for that. And I don't get that from these pictures whatsoever. So I think, seeing where they're located, how this is going to play. I think a site walk is important to this conversation. And that delay for the site walk, the legal opinion, might give us time to clean up you know, some paperwork that seems less than in order. Thank you. Mr. Beaumont. Yeah, I agree that commercial industrial is a good area for uh, ground-mounted solars. Um, but I'd like to get more specific in regards to what we have under review. It's all, all, all solar systems shall have a reasonable visual buffer as required in the site plan review regulations from public ways, neighboring commercial, industrial, residential uses based on the view sheds, contours of the land and abutting land use. So that, that goes to maybe getting into some details, those upfront ones especially, that are going to be visible to the public. And in our ordinance that's being proposed, provide a year-round screening of the ground-mounted solar energy system and associated equipment. So I'm more interested in, in, in if, if it really meets our buffer requirements um, from the street and from neighboring property. So I'm, I'm, I'm all in favor of uh, a site visit to be certain in regards to the buffer. I have some more dialogue on uh, what the buffer entails and does it truly hide those uh, visually from other other neighboring properties and particularly from Route 108 traffic and pedestrian and vehicular traffic and and I'm fine with uh, certainly if the board wants a legal opinion that can be accomplished before the next meeting and a site visit before the next meeting uh, would be my suggestion also thank you, thank you Mr. Belmore any further comments from the board Mr. Horton uh, just uh, one comment from me. I was just kind of unclear what the legal opinion was was specifically for. That's all. Yeah, so I'll make the motion now and we can discuss it. Uh, I make a motion that this application be tabled in lieu of a site walk uh, and the applicant to provide uh, some sort of method to show where the trackers would be located in, in terms of height uh, and location. Uh, also, the application be tabled in lieu of a legal opinion to see if our solar ordinance, which is being, which is in development, uh, applies to this project. That's what the legal opinion is for, because I think it does, but I, I want to lean on a legal opinion for that, and not just memory. 
One point of order, we say continue to a table, or is this diff two different matters? Uh, it will be continued to continued. October 18th. Continued to the October meeting with yes. those two things warranted. Okay, motion made yes, by motion. Mr. Witham. Second. Second by Mr. Uh, Rovitis. Rhodes. Discussion, Mr. Rhodes? Oh, no, that was the second. Okay. I think the only thing I'd like, I'd, I'd like to add is I don't know how we can move forward without a legal opinion, because what we might apply tonight with where we are compared to what we might make for a decision based on what we're going to vote on potentially tonight could be night and day. So I would rather have that ruling before we made a decision um, that, like I said, could be totally different. And I think important to that conversation to make sure when we get the legal opinion is this whole, when did the application start? The applicant said tonight, we're starting over. Uh, we had a false start. So in my opinion, we're starting tonight, not back in earlier part of the year. When, when if I can just ask, when, when did the solar ordinance start? When was that posted? It's under review now by this board and ultimately the council. So it's been in work for at least two, if not three, meetings. Since yep. July, I yep. believe. July or so. But you haven't posted a, a legal right. public hearing for it yet. You, you have workshop business. You haven't. You haven't. No. So I think so you're referring to uh, the public hearing, which is required. It's usually the first reading at City Council, and that's when the building inspector usually is not allowed to issue any building permits. And it's RSA six seventy six twelve. But again. Oh, I'm fine with getting a legal opinion sure. just to make sure. Thank you. Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? The application is continued to next month. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stoll. Next item, item 4B, compliance hearing for site plan compliance and conditions of approval for Firestone. Complete auto care located at 440 High Street in the Residential Commercial RC District, assessors map 38, lot 03, site number 04, 2020. Director Mayors. Yes, so you all should have received my memo regarding uh, Firestone uh, compliance hearing. This is for discussion only at this time. Uh, this Firestone uh, site plan was approved back in June 2020. Uh, as part of the site plan approval, a waiver was granted for the plan by the planning board with the conditions of a buffer, buffer yard requirement. And the rear garage doors shall rem remain closed during business operations with the exception of vehicles entering and exiting. Um, and the existing uh, vegetation was in... Uh, pretty poor condition, so we ended up sending a notice of violation for that as well. Uh, the Firestone has actually uh, replanted much of that vegetation, uh, I'm happy to report. Included in your packet is a timeline of enforcement notices for the property by the code compliance officer. This has been an ongoing seasonal issue during the summer months. Um, also included is a copy of the notice of decision and minutes from the meeting regarding this specific item. Uh, I guess the applicant could apply for a site plan amendment to review the requirements of the 2020 site plan regarding the rear garage doors. If the property continues to violate the conditions of approval, we will schedule them for a compliance hearing before the planning board on October 18th. And it looks like we have a representative from Firestone. So at this point, we open questions from the board? Or? Yeah. At this point, we open the questions from the board. Mr. Witham, for the applicant. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you on the uh, landscaping. Uh, of course. Much yes. improved. I mean, they basically tore everything out and replanted it. Yes. Uh, yes the we grass did. is coming in. The site looks much, much better. Yes. I was going to ask the director about the rear doors. Could they apply for a site plan amendment to allow them to keep them open? I mean, I'm anxious to hear what the applicant has to say, but, you know, they were going to post a sign, sign, sign everywhere, a sign. I'm not <laughs> sure that works. Uh, I get that it gets hot. Uh, there's 101 things. I, I guess my question for you, Michelle, uh, has code received complaints from the neighborhood about noise because of the doors being open? They have not received complaints recently about the doors being open, but it was an issue back in 2022 uh, that the doors were open from a neighbor. 
Was it the doors were open or there was noise? Noise, I think. Let me, hold on. Let me look back. Here's where I'm going with this. If, if, if the doors being open isn't creating a nuisance because it's not that loud, apply for noise. an amendment and allow them that it was noise? Yes. So much for my idea. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Richardson. Yeah, um, the last time you were here for a similar issue, yes. we heard about uh, air conditioning that was going to be installed that would help with the issue and keep the doors closed and the signage and that kind of thing. Um, we read about the signs that, that were put up. Was the air conditioning installed? So I believe during the first hearing that we had in regards to this, that was brought up. I don't believe there was any commitment to install any air conditioning. However, we do have seven fans that have been audited, fixed, and are now all operational that create a very strong airflow in the building. We've also added three floor fans that are industrial strength that also provide a decent and efficient airflow to drop the temperature even during extreme heat. So the back door is being open is no longer an issue from a from a heat standpoint from a temperature standpoint okay i mean I, I i drove by there many times and over the course of the summer and it was granted we had a lot of hot days but i i don't recall a single time that i drove by that the doors weren't open and i said to myself surely the neighbors are complaining about that yeah. and you know I, I think it's a wonderful business you certainly got people coming in and, and using the services and that kind of thing and that's good for you it's good for us but absolutely I'm thinking of the neighbors and and that kind of thing too yep. so um, and if I could say something really quickly about the neighborhood behind us uh, we absolutely care about those residents that live behind us um, we clearly are doing a lot to protect them and to make sure that their daily life isn't really impacted by our business uh, prior to, um, I would say about a month ago, uh, our test route drove right through that neighborhood. It was safe. It's a side street. We're off the main road. If a car breaks down, it's clearly not impacting travel for anyone on that main road. We've since changed that. So we no longer drive by their neighborhood. We no longer drive on that street, which I think is going to cause less disruption for that neighborhood. Uh, yes, it's a little bit more of a risk for us, but we're willing to take that risk to protect them and really help them not be impacted by our business. So we've recently made that change, uh, which I believe is also going to help mitigate any concern or issues that they may have with us just driving on their residential street. Yeah, I, I, I just want to follow up on that because yes. I remember that being an issue, but I remember my recollection is, is that you were pretty firm about dealing with that and that you had in fact already started some measures to prevent that from happening. And I was, you know, I was pleased to hear that at yes. that time. Uh, so, um, this is tough. Yeah, I believe at that but, time. I mean, I, I was sure that there would be neighbors complaining, and to hear that there haven't been any. Yes. That, yeah, yeah. Yes. That, that's, that's been a surprise. Yes. And, and, and that's a pleasant surprise. Yes. So. Absolutely. So, in, in regard to that measure that we took last hearing, it was more speed related. Um, so, we had some concerns with some speed and some you know, I guess you can call it weird driving that's happening there, right? So where you're, you know, testing brakes, you're doing a lot of stop, go, stop, go, stop, go to really get a, a, an understanding of what's going on with maybe brakes, right? So we're trying to, again, correct that behavior, make it so a resident back there isn't seeing a car doing something funky to kind of figure it out and diagnose it on the fly. So that's what we've done. And I believe it's going to help with that community. Yeah, I'd just like to support Mr. Richardson's assertion. That, uh, I seem to remember a talk of air conditioning uh, the last time there was uh, a, a meeting about the compliance. So, uh, again, I, I don't know what happened with that particular uh, nope. item. Mr. Robitis? I remember the air conditioning discussion, but I'm thinking it was more the Dodge Garage. When we were looking, That, if you remember, that neighborhood in the back was tight. And we had a lot of discussion about how we were going to deal with that um, maintenance facility to um, make sure that the neighbors weren't impacted. And if you remember, they said that their plan 
was to keep the doors closed and to, they were going to have air conditioning in their shops. No, but I remember the, the fire. I don't, I don't remember that. I'm not I saying do. that didn't happen, but I don't remember that. Your building is fairly new, so I think yes. you can get the, the impression that we're trying to help. Oh, absolutely. So yes. I, I will say this, that I um, oversee a business that has garage doors and a fleet inside, and we need our doors closed. Of course. And I've put out 30,000 memos in the last <laughs> five years, and I often come in and the doors are open. So it, it's a tough thing to police. Your yes. building is fairly new. Does it, would it make sense to add the AC in that and just be done with it? So what we can do absolutely is get quotes. You know, we can absolutely explore that option. If we could, I'm not sure um, if we can call back on maybe notes were, that were taken during that meeting to see if AC was referenced. Uh, again, to my knowledge, I don't believe any commitment was made by Firestone to install any HVAC system that would support AC in the shop. I may be mistaken. If I am, I'll certainly correct that, and we'll get quotes together, and our finance team will, will sort that out, and we'll do right by you in, in this town and make sure that we, we get that done. Um, I do want to speak to some preventative actions that we are taking, and we've done so uh, effective 9-1. So we got our first notice that we may be called to this hearing on, on 8-30, August 30th. Uh, we quickly and swiftly got with our HR team and our legal team to figure out what preventative measures we can take moving forward to ensure that we can police this as you stated, sir, that it's very hard to when you're managing from afar, right? So things that we have done and I have with me that I can send you electronically, unfortunately I did not think to make the packets for each one of you and I apologize for that, but I do have them here and I can send them electronically to you and to this council as needed. Uh, we've, con we've uh, with the partnership with HR, uh, establish a condition of employment that specifically states that every employee working at that location does have to follow uh, our door policy or garage door policy which states that the garage door must be closed at all times unless entering or exiting the building a car is leaving the building they have five minutes to close that door uh, there also is a buddy system policy that we're enacting as well which means someone drives the car out another technician closes the door behind them so that technician doesn't have to get out of the car then close it we're also installing cameras into our, into our shop as well uh, that will be recording and have files on hand for 60 days. We can then police from afar if needed and also take swift action if anyone's violating that policy. Uh, we also have potentially proposed adding, and maybe uh, this gentleman here, I believe he's the environmental uh, council member. Uh, we've also explored the idea of adding higher more robust trees to that back of that fence line there to maybe block prevent some sound from getting to those residents if that is a concern uh, director yes. Mayors, and then mr rhodes yes so i was able to go back and look at the october 19th planning board meeting minutes from last year and it looks like uh, mr rhodes actually brought this issue up regarding ac units and there was some discussion about that yeah. mr rhodes so there's always going to be one guy who will spoil the mood. That'll be me tonight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're in September. Firestone's here for a compliance hearing. It's happened every year since we approved you. Um, when your initial uh, approval came in, it was made with concerns expressed by your neighbors around noise. The first year you were back in here with noise concerns. You were back in here again with noise concerns. You were back in here again with neighbors complaining about the way that your techs were test driving cars through the neighborhood and noise concerns. You were back in here again with landscaping concerns. It has been a constant litany since your facility has been built of neighbors raising concerns of various types. You come in here saying they're going to be fixed and then the next year you're in here with either the same one or another one. And I'm frankly losing patience. And I think the neighbors are too. If they're not complaining at this point, my question is, is it because there's nothing to complain about or because you've worn them down? So you're talking about policing your staff. My question is, can you put a timer on those doors? Because you're saying <clears throat> they can't be open more than five minutes. Can you put a timer on the doors to close them after five minutes? Because despite the fact that you're referring to me as the environmental member here, and I do have concerns <coughs> in those areas, I am on the Conservation Commission. Yes. I work in systems design and technology. Putting a human into a chain of events is automatically a weak link. If you can automate it, you take that point of failure out. I'm getting 
impatient with the number of times you're up here in front of us, it seems to be on a yearly basis, with another violation. I'd like to see a permanent fixing. And I brought up the air conditioning at the last one because when we spoke about the doors being open and noise complaints from the neighbors, I believe it was you, it might have been another fire sergeant rep raised concerns about the heat in the facility. Well, there's an easy, well, not necessarily easy, but there is a way to fix that, yep. control the heat for your techs. Don't violate the terms of approval, which you've done consistently every year since you were approved in over concerns of your neighbors. You state that you care about the neighborhood that you're a part of. I'd like to see you follow that statement up with action. Yep. And, and you raise a lot of valid points. And I completely understand and respect your opinion there and, and, and what you just said. Uh, I believe this particular hearing, I, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, counsel, but I don't believe a, uh, this was caused by a complaint by a, a neighbor in the back. And you may be right. Maybe they are worn out. Maybe they're just potentially not in the mood to complain anymore, right? Or it could be simply because they have nothing to complain about because there is no noise, right? Uh, I guess we can agree, disagree, or just move on from that mood point. Uh, what I can say is the fans certainly impact the temperature of that store. Uh, I can speak personally being in that store. Uh, I'd be in, I'm in that store quite often these days due to some, you know, staffing upgrades and some onboarding that I'm being a little bit more hands-on with. Uh, and I can assure you that during those hot days, those seven fans that are blowing at max speed and those three floor fans on top of the front doors being open, which does not violate any compliance issues that we may have, uh, do keep that shop at a very reasonable temperature for our techs to work in. Um, what I will say is, although we've been called in front of you fine people quite often, and hopefully this is the last time, and I can assure you, in fact, this will be the last time, uh, although I like you guys, that we will be speaking uh, in regard to any com sort of compliance issues. Uh, I will say that uh, we are taking extreme measures. In terms of the timer on the door, I'm assuming that you mean like an automatic system that would drop those doors. It doesn't require human intervention because last time you were in here, you were saying yep. the doors were open because of temperature and that you would take steps to fix that. You said that you have. Yep. Apparently, they haven't been sufficient to resolve the doors being open. Yep, and we've taken some additional measures, as I stated before, a camera system, a condition of employment that could result in termination of an employee for simply not closing a door. That's how serious we're taking this. And that could be a store manager, someone whose salary employee drives the business, drives results, could be terminated for simply not shutting a door to stay in compliance with this very important, very serious matter that impacts the community. Um, we can certainly explore that option. My only concern there would be sensor concerns if a car is potentially pulling out while that car is up or maybe stalls out something could happen to that vehicle i'm not sure exactly what the ramifications would be if that door just automatically shuts within five minutes uh, we have also explored just a simple garage door electronic closer right uh, we've already priced that out understand the financial impact that that would have that's not something that's outside the realm and does exist in other stores that we have that would make it a little easier to get those doors open and shut in a timely fashion uh, just to further that, uh, those backdoor concerns, uh, another area where we've addressed is our deliveries. So we do have to keep those doors open to get tires in our building through our tire deliveries that happen multiple times a week. We are seeing a smaller volume, just based on some company decisions that we've made. Uh, we've split up some different brands of tires that come in at different various times of the day to help our staff just get them into our building and not be as laborious on a daily basis. Uh, we are exploring the idea of getting those deliveries in the front of our building as opposed to the back of our building to, again, keep those doors shut as, as much as we possibly can. Because uh, when those deliveries do come in, they are open for an extended period of time because uh, we typically get, or we were getting, excuse me, you know, upwards of 100 tires in a delivery. Um, so it does take a little bit of time to get those tires into our building. So those orders have shrunk to about 40 on average, which I think is definitely doable to get into the front of our building and get them where they need to be in our building. Mr. Belmore. Yeah, um, I appreciate everything you're doing. I, th I think if I was living in the neighborhood, those test drives, the braking and all that sort of thing, probably was a, a real nuisance. I would say so. I'm unclear on how many people are calling about noise. I almost wish you could do a site plan amendment. I'm not sure that's a critical issue right now, but you've taken a lot of steps. Yeah. Uh, the landscaping is great. I appreciate that, uh, redoing that. Um, 
I'd you know, like to think we're business friendly and I, I yeah. put in those, those onerous conditions. It's tough enough to hire people these days. If you start putting all these onerous conditions on them, good luck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's your business. Run it the way you want. I and mean, that, yes. that's fine if that's what you feel the need is to do. But yep. um, I don't know if it did. I'm not clear on how many noise complaints we get. And I, I, all I heard is like one. It's, it's more of staff seeing it open and some of us seeing it open. Um, I don't know. It just seems like, uh, with all due respect to other members who have talked, uh, seems like we're kind of yeah, and, and you up a little bit and uh, maybe unnecessarily for the black doors. I don't know. I, I'm unclear about that, but yes. thank you. Yeah, so we've got – excuse me, I'm sorry. If uh, the applicant was to request a site plan amendment to allow the back doors to stay open, would that cause notification of abutters? Yes, yeah, so it would require a public hearing. Uh, quite frankly, I don't want to tell you what to do, but that's what I would do if I were in your shoes, to really get a feel for the neighborhood. Because if the abutters have concerns about the doors being open, they're going to show up, and we'll hear the real story. Yeah. Uh, if they're not, then we've solved the problem, perhaps, at least that one. Yes, so that's what we consulted with our legal team, is, is filing for that amendment. Uh, we want to see how this, of course, this hearing went first. Uh, we want to show you guys our good faith of what we're doing to preventatively correct said issue um, but we've consulted with legal and uh, we feel that we may go that direction just to see if this back door issue is a concern of the neighbors or if it's to, to it's mr rhodes point right good I, point. I appreciate i mean they got noticed that their vegetation was dying that that's not why they're here they took care of that right yep. away you you've not been scared to come in front of us you've yep. taken steps uh, they just haven't worked with regard to the door because yeah. as Mr. Rhodes said, we're relying on the human element, which is the weak link in the equation. So um, you can put on onerous conditions uh, uh, at time of hire, mm -hmm. conditions of employment, cameras, big brothers watching, yeah. uh, heck, uh, give all of us garage door open so we can close it <laughs> when we drive by. I don't know, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I think it's really trying to understand, is this really a problem yeah. or, or not? And I think uh, request for an amendment and notifying of butters is maybe the best way to get at that. Because yep. right now it's conjecture at best. I couldn't fix it in my own business after years. Uh, I'm not confident that you'll be able to fix it. Yeah. It's, it's a challenging one, that's for sure. It's, it's an uphill battle. Mr. Perry? Yeah. So I, keep, I seem to keep, uh, keep agreeing with Councilor Witham here. Honestly, there's only so much that you can do. And we honor, we honor the fact that you have done a lot of things to try and improve the situation, albeit not perfect. Um, but, I mean, certainly preventative action is the best action. That will take care of it. Yeah. But I can assure you that if you, if you work with overhead door companies, if you are willing to go forward and do something to, um, you know, in manufacturing we call it pokey yoking, right? We are a proof of process, right? We have at, at Conatech, where I work, we do have overhead doors that are on timers, and they're also on garage door openers. Okay. So we Good put enough. those, we give those on all of our forklifts, and within a certain amount of time, they come down. And plus, they'll have safety features. So if you okay. have a car there, if you're um, walking through it, or if yeah. you're unloading tires, they'll know you're there, mm -hmm. right? So I guess what's important is, look, if, if, if you are serious about keeping that door closed, yep. put in the tools that will ensure that you are Done. protected. Um, and that will go a long way with the neighbors. Yeah. Hopefully you won't have to come before us. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly if, if you can get the abutters to have a say and give their peace, that will go a long way too. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Any further discussion? Thank you very much. Thank you. Director Mayor, is any new business that may come before the board? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Item five, workshop business. Solo ordinance discussion. Director Mayors, take it away. Yes, so we have incorporated some changes from the last uh, meeting, uh, which include revisions to table 4-1A of the use of the solar. Um, revision to ground mounted solar in the agricultural district requirement for small and medium scale solar uh, provided that the lot area is not less than five acres and no array shall be located within 100 feet from any property line. Uh, revisions included to not permit small scale energy systems in the residential districts 
and an updated note one to indicate that small scale, medium, large scale solar system shall be located in a portion of the lot fully behind the principal structure unless otherwise approved by the planning board where ground mounted solar is permitted by conditional use permit. Mr. Witham. Thank you. Um, I was going to say, I, I, I think this is excellent, and I thank staff for working through this. This is one of those things, right? We did look at some other uh, solar ordinances from a few other communities, but there are not many of these out there right now, right? So I won't say it's necessarily cutting edge, but it's on the front end of this, right? And I think it's important because we're seeing these uh, pop up tonight, uh, case in point. Um, as with many ordinances, sometimes you start to work with them and then you find it's, it's hard to know what's wrong with this where you haven't applied it yet, right? So when you start to work with it, you might then uncover, oh, this needs to be tweaked or that needs to be tweaked. But I can't identify what those are yet here. Uh, I, I'm pretty comfortable with moving this forward for action by the council. But uh, I am one of only all of you, so I welcome other thoughts. Mr. Richardson. I appreciate reading through this, and um, there's a lot here, and certainly it's not my most favorite reading of all <laughs> kinds, but nevertheless, there has been a lot of work done on it. And one of the things I talked to Michelle a little bit about before we had our, before we started our meeting was the roof-mounted um, units. And I did, what I was thinking about was their safety in a storm. And I know there's a section in here uh, addressing that, that the mounted units have to be secure and that kind of thing. What I am concerned about, though, is the roof itself that it's attached to. Um, I, I think the safety, I, I looked it up, and the safety requirement for roof mounted is up, up, is up to 140 miles an hour winds, which is a Category 4 hurricane, I believe. So that's fine, but what if the roof isn't safe to a Category 4 wind? And the roof fails, and then we got a flying sail going through the air. And, and I don't know how we address that other than requiring where you have a roof mounted unit that you secure your roof, that you, re, you, know, you beef it up, you reinforce it to make sure that it is also required uh, to that 140 mile an hour uh, requirement. So that, that's what came to mind as I was reading through this. Mr. Berry? And Mr. Rhodes. Yeah, I'm going to piggyback that train of thought. So, um, you know, I have solar on my roof, right? I had it installed last year. Um, the process, at least for a roof mounted, is they brought in somebody that looked at the inside of my roof. They, they went into my attic. They went into my garage. They looked at the, the rafters, all the joists, made sure that the roof is structurally sound. And my assumption, and maybe there should be some clarification on uh, the installer's end, is I know they work with structural engineers. Right? There's got to be somebody that's stamping these. There, there's got to be some sort of engineering approval that says, hey, the load is good, right? Because that's a major part of house design, right? So there, there's got to be something in place. So either, either the installer needs to demonstrate that, that the uh, structure is structurally sound or, some, or they need to consult with an engineering firm to do that in, in some way, shape, or form. Right. Uh, Mays, you have something to add? Or? Yeah, so I just did look up the uh, rooftop solar requirements, and it does require that it uh, follows the international building codes and international electrical codes. So I'm thinking that that would be addressed at time of building permit. So what does that mean? Uh, the building inspector would look at those issues as part of the building permit package. So it wouldn't be part of the zoning. So when you go to apply for the permit, you would have to uh, supply that additional information. Okay, and, and I know this is going to sound stupid, but is, is that inspector qualified to make a structural engineering decision? 
it would be required to have a third party look at it. Perfect. That's yeah. exactly <laughs> what I wanted to hear. Thank you. Mr. Rhodes and Mr. Witham. Um, so first off, I'd like to echo Mr. Whitten's statements on this. I think there's been a few revisions on this. We've gotten to an extremely good place with this uh, ordinance, and um, it, it strikes a good balance between maintaining a good character for the city and still permitting the installation of solar up to a large scale with a review on sites in a, in a district that's appropriate for it. So when you take that into consideration, um, both of those components, I think this does a remarkable job of walking the line and getting a good ordinance in place. Um, of course, the, the test is always once we get it out there and find out what happens, I'm sure there'll be a couple of cases where it's unforeseen consequences. There always are. Regarding the, the structural component, I had a very similar experience when I had solar put onto my house about six years ago now. Um, at that point, they did actually send a structural engineer and electrician out to look at mine, probably because it was 130 years old and they wanted to make sure it wasn't go flying off. Um, but regarding the, the quality of the roof and what you put on it, if the panels are rated to 140 miles an hour, but the roof isn't, I'm more concerned about the roof coming off and hitting something than I am the solar panels coming off of the roof and hitting something in addition. Um, so that, I think, falls more under a building code decision than a solar ordinance decision. Mr. Witham and Mr. Belmore. Yeah, I'll be quick. Um, yeah, I feel comfortable with the fact you need to pull a building permit, an electrical permit. In the case of wind loading on a roof, that's the building permit. Uh, our building inspector would be on site to evaluate that and, as necessary, would require third-party certification from a structural engineer. Uh, that's what happens if you build a carport or do much of anything else, right? So I, I think we have a system in place to try to police that. Um, so I feel comfortable with that, uh, that process versus trying to articulate that here in a zoning ordinance. Thanks. Mr. Belmore. Yeah, I'd like to uh, make a motion to move this forward to the city council. And certainly if there's a second and other people haven't commented during the discussion after the motion, I just want to get, you know, move the need a little bit. So I make a motion to move it forward to the city council for their consideration and adoption. Motion made by Mr. Belmore, second by Mr. Berry. Further discussion? I think the only thing I'd like to say is that I as well got a price for a property that I have up north. And I got the quote back. They had a structural engineer. Sorry. It was on their payroll. So... <laughs> So when I got that proposal back, it, it laid out all that evaluation that was done and the pitch of the roof and the size of the rafters. So I don't think that's going to be an extra burden on somebody looking to put these in. It's part of the proposal that they're going to give you. Right. And, and, Barry and, Mr. Richardson. and to piggyback that thought, you know, the, the fact is that most, most of us out there that are going to be consumers of solar panels are going to be working through a company, a professional solar installing company that has those resources on board. And, and that was definitely the case for me. It sounds like it was for you, Mr. Robitis. What my fear is your DIYer that loves to do it themselves, right? The, your, your, uh, <laughs> your weekend contractor, per se. So uh, we just want to make sure that those structures are protected and that they meet all of the codes and international standards that are required for our city. Richardson. Yeah, I, I'm just bringing it up because it's 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 what I thought of as I was reading through it. And I, if there's a process in place to deal with that, I'm more than happy to let the process do its job because that's what they're there for. Any further discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. It's like a hurdle. <laughs> <laughs> and we landed on two pieces. <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> Item 6, Communication and Miscellaneous. Item 6A, Summers with Community Power Committee. Director Mayors. Yes, so this was a resolution uh, for City Council, Resolution 224. Uh, we need a planning board member to be appointed by the planning board chair to serve on this um, uh, Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire. Okay, did Mr. Horton, was Mr. Horton that showed interest? Yeah, I did, uh, I did initially uh, volunteer for that, and uh, I, I do still support uh, the committee. And uh, just a side note, at our last recent uh, commissioner's meeting at the uh, Stratford Regional Planning Commission, I actually uh, met two folks that were familiar with, the, uh, with this uh, 
uh, type of committee work, and uh, I've already made two contacts that can probably potentially help uh, the committee move forward too. So, careful, I, uh, Chris. I, we haven't elected a chair yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's not good. One step at a time. <laughs> so yeah, I, 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 I do support. I, I would like uh, support on. I would like your support on uh, being. Uh, what's the word? Appointed. Appointed. Yeah. Thank you. To the, does uh, the board have to vote no. on on my appointment? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but at not. this time, I will I will appoint Mr. Horton <laughs> as a representative. Item 6B, construction surety bond, release vote. The Villages of Sunnydale, Director Mayors. Yeah, so you uh, should have received uh, a memo. Uh, sorry this was a little late, but this did go to vote at the City Council for street acceptance. Uh, but according to the notice of decision, the planning board is the only ones authorized to release the $200,000 that we're holding uh, for the road reconstruction. We do have the maintenance bond of $234,000, which will be held for a two-year period starting on September 18th. Uh, so that will be expire September 18th, 2025. So you would be voting tonight to release the $200,000 that has been held. Mr. Chairman, I move that the release of the construction surety bond for 200000 from the villages at Sunningdale be approved. Second. From Mr. Witham, second by Mr. Belmore. Discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Any other communications and miscellaneous? Mr. Witham. Thank you. Just real quick, um, we had a public works and environment meeting today. And I did ask uh, the city manager to ask the city engineer if uh, she could take a look at the sidewalk that was completed on Tri-City Road associated with the storage units for the Tara Fields project. Uh, uh, as you know, that was a condition of approval. Uh, it's my humble opinion they were not built uh, to uh, appropriate specification. And of particular note, and this is where I'd ask the planning staff to look at this. I believe we required the applicant to continue the granite curb to the first entrance to Terra Meadows. Um, they did not do that. It's shy, uh, you know, 100 and something feet. Uh, I think we agreed beyond that in the area of those new construction rental properties there, the old Fairpoint building. We didn't require the curbing there, but they were required to bring it to the, the, the first driveway. That wasn't done. And again, I'm also concerned just about the overall construction of the sidewalk. Will our sidewalk tractor fit on it? Was it built to city specifications? Because the city has to accept it, much like we, a road, like Sunningdale development. Uh, and I'm not sure it's up to snuff. So that could be examined. And for the, for the planning department, it's particularly that granite curbing piece. If I could, if I could just piggyback on that. Mr. Barry? Yeah, no, go, no, no. Mr. Horton, uh, I I too agree. Uh, I do remember that I do recall the same conversations, and I know the first time that they had built the sidewalk, we certainly had reservations on their practices that they used there as well. And I thought, well, I've pulled the minutes, but I thought that uh, it was supposed to be an engineered design for that section of white of sidewalk too, or at least a a, pl a plan provided for that. So I would be interested in uh, hearing more about that as well. Mr. Berry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I, I want to swing back around to the housing workshop that was uh, that happened last week. Um, to those of you who did not make it out to that, it was a really wonderful event. Um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about the housing market, uh, a lot about the trends and how they're going. The, I'm still shocked that the vacancies are below 1%. To me, that still shocks me, but it answers a lot of questions. Um, I tip my hat to you, Director. You did a wonderful job. Thank you for presenting and taking time out of your day to speak and, and help educate us. Uh, as far as the breakout sessions, you know, my wife and I were in different sessions, but we both had very positive things to say about them. So um, hopefully some good notes were taken and they can be used to help better where we're going. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Just to follow up on that, we did have that recorded, so that uh, will be available I think it is available now, actually, for those who want to listen to the presentation regarding housing. Yep, 
through the city website live stream. And I can send that out to the planning board. A link. Uh, tomorrow night is a uh, public informational meeting on Rule 108 Complete Street Project. Do you have anything to add to that, Director Mears? No. I do have one thing. <laughs> it's six, 6 to 7 p.m. here in Council Chambers, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Any other communication miscellaneous? I have one thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know if anybody has driven to Walmart, but they have replanted a bunch what of is? landscaping there. So I just stuff. had the follow up with the chairman about that. That's Thank all. Thank you. Do away with the orange mulch, though. We tried. Uh, okay. <laughs> the fake mulch. I hate so it. ugly. <laughs> so you can actually motion see it come adjourn. out of the gas motion station. To adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to uh, does anybody have a motion to motion adjourn. to adjourn? Motion made by Mr. Belmore. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Haberman. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you very much.